The world of professional sports is filled with monumentous ups and soul crushing downs. And perhaps no one personifies this quite like Greg Hardy. Hardy has lived several lives in his 34 years on this earth. NFL star, UFC top prospect, journeyman boxer, and as of late, hawker of cable and internet inside Walmart. A wise man once said the difference between a feel-good story and a Greek tragedy all depends on where you end the tale. But how did Greg Hardy find himself in this spot? How could a man who made millions throughout his career be in such a bad place financially now? Well, let's find out. I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com and this is the rise and fall of Greg Hardy the dark side of sports. But before we get started, please take a sec to smash that like button for me. The only way the YouTube algorithms notice us and suggest us to more people is if you guys continue to like the videos and share them to others on other platforms. Thanks for the help up until this point and we can't really do it without you guys. But with all that being said, let's jump right in. Gregory McCarl Hardy was born on July 28, 1988 in Memphis, Tennessee. Always a big and athletic kid, Greg took the sports early on in life. And by the time he entered Briarcrest Christian High School, he was a three-sport letterman in football, basketball, and track. Greg was always a freak athlete, and by 2004, he helped lead his high school football team to a state championship. As a senior, he racked up 65 tackles, including 12 for a loss and six sacks. And on top of that, he caught 48 passes for 268 yards on offense. Nah, just kidding. He never played quarterback, but thanks though, Uncle JB. This is my sentiments exactly. Interestingly enough though, Greg actually played with Michael Orr of Blindside fame, both in high school and later on in college. After racking up a load of accolades in high school, Greg Hardy eventually accepted a football scholarship to play at the University of Mississippi. After his last year in college, Greg entered the NFL draft. Even though he had put up excellent numbers in school, he had a few injuries and turned in a less than desirable combine showing. All of this would cause his draft stock to slip. Hardy would ultimately be picked up in the sixth round number 175th overall. 2013 though would be his breakout year, setting the Panthers single season record for sacks, earning a Pro Bowl spot and a second team All Pro honors. But just as things started to look up in his NFL career, his personal life took a dark turn. During the following offseason, reports were surfaced that Hardy had been arrested for domestic abuse. Although the case would be dismissed after the victim failed to appear in court, the ensuing controversy would ultimately lead to him being released by the Panthers after playing only one game in 2014. But Hardy being a solid player and a top tier athlete didn't sit at home for long. On March 18, 2015, he signed a one year deal with the Dallas Cowboys for $11.3 million. Now keep all these numbers in mind because they'll be really important to remember later. But they wouldn't totally let Hardy off the hook though. The NFL originally wanted to suspend him for 10 games, but arbitration ended up reducing it to only four. And once he got back on the field, he put up solid numbers again. Hardy recorded 35 tackles, six sacks, and one interception in his 12 games played for the Dallas Cowboys. Proving that once again, he had tons of talent. If only he could keep his act together though. But sadly for Hardy, he couldn't. In September of 2016, Greg Hardy would be arrested yet again, this time for cocaine possession in Dallas. This coupled with all of the heat that the Cowboys had already taken for his original offenses wound up being more than they wanted to deal with and they would decline to re-sign him for a second season. With a reputation like his, no other team was willing to take a chance on him, and that pretty much spelled the end of his pro football days. All told, 
Hardy had made about 25 million in the course of his NFL career. 25 million. Still being at the peak of his athletic ability and now looking for the next chapter of life, Hardy announced that he would start a mixed martial arts career, stating that he had already been training for the last several months. He would make his amateur MMA debut on November 4th, 2017, where he KO'd Joe Hawkins in 32 seconds. He turned around quick and took another fight in December 1st, this time picking up a TKO again in the first round. And on February of 2018, he picked up his third amateur MMA win, again, by first round TKO. One thing was becoming obvious. Hardy was a very big guy with top tier athletic ability and turns out he could really crack. Deciding that he had had enough of fighting for free and wanted to make some money, he would turn pro on April of 2018. Also wanting to make some money, Dana White announced that he had signed Hardy to take part in the Contender Series, a show put on by the UFC where they try out new and up and coming fighters with a chance of being signed to the roster. On June 12th, he fought fellow former NFL defensive end Austin Lane Contender Series fight. Hardy will come out on top again by, you guessed it, another first round KO. In, in what perhaps was a foregone conclusion, Dana awarded him a contract after only two Contender Series fights. Now for those that don't know, having that kind of punching power is a gift and a curse, at least at the developmental standpoint. Hardy was getting guys out of there so fast that he wasn't able to pick up on the finer aspects of the sport. We knew he could punch, but he was headed to the UFC heavyweight division. Everyone could punch at that level. What did his ground game look like? What about his gas tank? How would he react when he found himself in a situation where he was the nail and not the hammer for once? No one could answer. His inexperience would show through in his first UFC fight against Alan Crowder. Hardy performed well at the start, but ultimately would suffer his first loss via disqualification for kneeing Crowder in the face while he was down, which is against the rules in the UFC. But Hardy would actually take it in good spirits and chalk it up as a learning experience, bouncing back to take another TKO win in April 27th of 2019. However, more strange Greg Hardy type hijinks would strike in October of 2019. Hardy would take a short notice fight against the good old combat wombat himself, Ben Sassoli. Nah, seriously, that's actually what the guy calls himself. I don't know, he's from Australia or something, but anyway. Two main things would stand out at this fight. A, it was the first time that Hardy couldn't knock his opponent out and the Wombat were forced to fight to a decision. B was in Hellergate. A little more to keep him off you, all right? We still got the single leg bump and him straight kicks up the middle. Inhale all right. Here. What's that? Inhale here. Can you? Can I? I don't know if you can. Don't worry about it. Can I take my inhaler? It's in my pocket. Is it medical? Is it medical code? Yes. Here. You saw the proof. Mind you, again, this was the first time that Hardy had been past the first round in a fight. And he was about to answer that question about what his gas tank looked like. And the answer was, not great. In between the second and third round, Hardy could be seen using an asthma pump-like inhaler in the corner. Which is a no-no for obvious reasons. I mean, who knows what was in that thing. With the help of the inhaler, Hardy was able to eke out his first decision win. But after reviewing the footage, the Massachusetts State Athletic Commission overruled the original decision and the fight was called a no contest. Hardy, wanting to stay busy, would take his next fight the very next month against Alexander Volkov. This being a notable step up in competition would end up being Hardy's first loss via decision. Again because of his poor fight cardio. Hardy would take three fights in 2020. The third fight, Hardy faced off against Marcin Tabora. Greg looked good in the first round dropping Tabora, but in the second, he got caught and would suffer his first ever knockout loss. 
taking a bit of time off, his next fight wouldn't come until July 2021 against Tai Tuivasa. Another slugger and what was almost promised to end up with someone getting knocked out. And that someone was Greg Hardy, KO number two. In June of 2022, Hardy would suffer his third straight knockout at the hands of Sergey Spivak. And by then, Dana and the UFC decided to cut their losses and give up on this experiment and fail to renew Hardy's contract after Hardy tried to negotiate for more money off three knockouts. All told, Greg Hardy had fought 10 times in the UFC, not counting his contender series fights. And although he wasn't getting paid nearly as much in the UFC as he was in the NFL, he still managed to pull in top tier pay relative to his inexperience based off of his name value. At the end of his run with the UFC, he had earned an estimated $1.2 million. Now that his run with the UFC was apparently over, Hardy decided to try his hand at boxing, both traditional and bare knuckle. In June of 2022, he signed a multi-fight contract with BKFC. He also made his traditional boxing debut in October of that year against Mike Cook, whom he would take a second round knockout win over. In November of 2022, he stepped in on one week notice to fight Haseem Rahman Jr., whose dad was famous for being a one-hit wonder and for this picture. <laughs> Rockman Jr. had recently lost a huge payday when his Jake Paul fight fell out and was looking to make up for it. Not many knew much about Rockman Jr. or what kind of skill he would bring to the table. But on fight day, he came in giving up about 40 pounds or more to Hardy. Greg would win the decision in a fight that was difficult to tell if it was due to Hardy's skill or Rockman's lack thereof as Hardy kind of just big brother in the whole fight. Either way though, Hardy was now 2-0 in boxing. However, on February 2023, Hardy made his BKFC debut, where he would wind up losing by second round KO to Josh Watson. Recently, as of about three weeks of making this video, footage surfaced of Hardy being KO'd yet again in some lower level boxing show. But perhaps more shocking was shortly before that, a different video popped up of Hardy himself claiming to be working at Walmart. Well, not for Walmart, but you know how when you're in Walmart and those annoying people approach you trying to sell you cable or internet or whatever? Well, he says he's doing that now. Question is, how could a guy who made upwards of $27 million in the NFL, another million in the UFC, and at least a few hundred thousand in his boxing fights be doing this bad, this fast? Well, reports saw that Hardy had a degenerate gambling problem. And to be honest, it's probably disrespectful to degenerate gamblers to compare Greg Hardy to them because there's a story out there that he once lost $2 million in a single night in Vegas. Not to mention, he did a fair share of splurging on jewelry and cars, having spent over $450,000 on luxury watches and over $3 million on sports cars. Well, that's at least $6 million gone. So what happened to the rest of it? Remember that jewelry that I just mentioned him loving so much? Well, turns out Hardy will fall victim to a scam pulled off by his quote unquote ex-girlfriend who quote unquote absconded with $720,000 worth of jewelry and cash. And not to be tasteless, but this chick has some King Kong sized balls to rip off a guy with a uh, Shall we say the domestic history of Greg Hardy? But nonetheless, she seems to have pulled it off. And what's worse, Greg thought it was a good idea to play the stock market. And for a guy who previously showed the financial discipline of a five-year-old left alone with a bag of chocolate, that was a terrible idea. All this plus whatever other debt I'm sure he had racked up was just too much to keep up with. That's why he took fights so often in the UFC. I'm sure he needed as much money as he could get. 
He went from living in a luxurious six bedroom mansion that he paid 500K a year to rent. Terrible idea, by the way. Always buy if you can. To a modest one bedroom apartment with a monthly rent of $750. The life of Greg Hardy, at least up until this point, perfectly exemplifies the quote from earlier. The difference between a feel-good story and a Greek tragedy does depend on where you end the tale. If you stopped it at his Pro Bowl year, it's a heartwarming story. Or at his successful transition to MMA, at least in the beginning, then it's an inspirational story. But if you keep going, it gets pretty sad. At the end of the day, Greg Hardy isn't that old and has tons of time to turn things around. Not to mention, he does have earning potential, if he makes the right moves. Because of his past, which got admittedly despicable at one point, some may think that his downfall is well deserved. It even got pretty ironically funny at some points, like the part where the girl made off with his jewelry and his money. So I understand the sentiment of people who feel this way, but I think in life, we all deserve a shot at self-improvement. I'm sure none of us really wants to be judged forever for the worst moments of our past. But for Hardy, however, it remains to be seen whether or not he could bounce back from where he finds himself at right now. But what do you think? Do you think Greg Hardy deserves his L's? Do you think that he could bounce back from all of this? Hit us up in the comment section and let us know. Also, if you made it all the way through the video, then we hope that that means that you enjoyed it. And if so, then don't forget to hit that like button for us. Liking and sharing each one of these is the only way to help us to continue to grow as a channel. And if you want to be updated whenever we drop a new weekly video, then hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell. That way you will be dinged when a new episode drops. And with all that being said, I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com, signing out. Until next time, peace.